Welcome back to part 2 of all you need to know about working in Germany. If you haven't watched part 1, I highly recommend to do so, otherwise you will have only half the information, right? In part 2 now, we are going to talk about high demand jobs, how to get those jobs as European and non-European, where to find those jobs. We're also going to talk about pension, unemployment, worker unions and some questions from you. Are you ready? Let's go! The German news and the government is always throwing around those crazy numbers that in 2030 this many jobs are missing in this kind of field. So I'm gonna give you a few examples of the jobs that are in highest demand right now and in the future. Let's start. The first kind of jobs that Germany has a huge shortage of is IT professionals. At the moment, there are over 100,000 open positions for IT professionals, from software developers to cyber security experts to IT project managers, you name it. And the companies have been already very active in recruiting uh, skilled workers from abroad. So in Berlin, I've seen a lot of people coming from Pakistan, from India, from Russia. Especially for this kind of jobs, it's not gonna get less, it's just gonna get more because Germany is working on its Digitalisierung. 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 Germany has always been behind in the IT sector and they're finally catching up, but they don't have enough people to work in this field, so they need to import them. If you're a skilled software developer, you can expect between four and five thousand euro a month and salary. It's way above the national average. So it's a good starting point. And since we're already at IT, let's talk a little bit about a tool everybody who uses the internet should have. A VPN client. And it's a good thing that we have one as today's sponsor. NordVPN. NordVPN is one of the most trustworthy and the fastest provider out there. By hiding your IP address and encrypting your traffic, a VPN isn't only great for online privacy, but also for security, especially with NordVPN's brand new threat protection feature, which goes way beyond what other VPN clients can do. With enabling threat protection, you don't have to worry about going to shady websites anymore. Threat protection blocks those dangerous websites that potentially host malware or try to trick you into giving them your personal data. It's also helping to keep your computer safe and clean by scanning everything you download for infected files and taking care of them. And all this and much more will just cost you as much as a cup of coffee each month. So, if you don't already have it, go to nordvpn.com slash radicalliving to get a two-year plan plus one additional month for a huge discount. And if you're still not sure if you need it, you can try it risk-free for 30 days with a money-back guarantee. You're welcome. Another field where there's a lot of open jobs is the handyman area. I'm not sure if this is the right word, but people who work as electricians or in sanitary and heating, mechanics. For this kind of jobs, there has been a shortage of people for the last 10 years. It's impossible to get an appointment with the handyman. You always have to wait for months. And the statistics say that there's, at the moment, over 60,000 open positions. For this kind of jobs, you can expect a monthly salary between 2,800 and 3,600 euro a month. On average. Oh no, the party board is coming. Another job with very bleak predictions is the one of a caregiver, a nurse, caring for old people or in a hospital. There's already a shortage of 30,000 caregivers in Germany and the numbers are gonna get worse and worse each year because the German demographic pyramid looks like this. There's more old people than young people and every year more people are joining nursing homes so they need more people to take care of them and there's gonna be a mass shortage. So if you can imagine to work in this kind of job, please come to Germany and take care of our elders. And as a nurse and caregiver, you can expect a salary between two and three thousand euro a month. The next one is quite paradox, but Germany has also a shortage of people working in children daycares, so early child educators. There's not enough people who want to work there, and even though Germany has a very low birth rate, there's not enough people in this field. The estimation is that by 2030, 200,000 open positions will be in this kind of field. So if you like to work with children, you can be sure if you come to Germany, you will get a job in a children daycare. And you can expect a monthly salary of 2,500 euro a month, which isn't too bad. Next, another job 
which will have massive shortages in the next few years is the one of a doctor. 45% of all doctors in Germany are above the age of 65. So in the next few years, they're all gonna go into pension and there's gonna be a mass shortage. So if you wanna become a doctor, Germany has a lot of open positions in the next years. And doctors are earning good salary here. So the average salary would be 7,000 euro a month. You can have a very good life from that. In the cities, the situation is already pretty bleak, but it's even worse in the villages. Because in Germany, all the young people are moving to the city. They don't want to live in the villages, in the small towns. They want to have action and there's not enough doctors for all the old people in the villages. So if you can imagine doing that, move to the German village and become a doctor. Yeah. Okay, now you know which jobs are in highest demand. Let's move on to finding a job. Depending on where you are from, it might be very easy or very hard for you to start working in Germany. If you are from the European Union, you have it very easy. You can just go to Germany and start working. No permits required. If you are from outside the European Union, it gets a little bit more tricky. You will need a working permit and maybe even a visa. German laws regarding foreigners working in Germany are like this. The higher qualified you are, the easier it is for you to get a work and residency permit. That's very unfortunate for low-skilled labor jobs, I know, but they also have very good chances if they are looking for jobs in those high-demand fields I mentioned. If you are from one of those countries here, you can just come to Germany without a visa look for a job on location and then apply for residency. Pretty easy. If you are not from one of those countries, you probably have to find a job even before ever coming to Germany. And only then you can apply for the visa. But Germany is very eager to get workers from abroad. There are many different ways it can be done. There are visas for IT professionals, visas for job seekers, visas for studying and training. Though providing all this information in this video would be way too much, it would take hours alone. But if you're interested in knowing more about this, go to makeitingermany.com. There you will find all the information you may need regarding this. They will even tell you what your chances are for whatever you're looking for. So go have a look at that. What's also important to do, even before thinking of coming to Germany, is to see if your foreign qualification is even accepted in Germany. You can do that pretty easy by filling in all the data here online on this official government website and they will immediately tell you if your degree qualifies and if not, what you need to do next. One interesting question of yours was, what happens if you lose your job? Do you need to go back to your country? Well, that depends on what kind of visa you have. But for most people from outside the European Union, it means that you have three months to find a new job. And if you don't manage to find a job in three months, then you probably have to leave. But you can still apply for a job seeker visa, which would give you another six months. Another thing worth mentioning is that Germany has a working holiday visa program. That means that anyone from outside the European Union, from those countries here, between the age of 18 and 31, can get a working holiday visa. That means that you can pretty easily come here, work a bit or not, and see if you even like it here. I myself did two years of working holiday visas abroad, one in Australia and one in Japan. And if you have the opportunity to do this, do it, it's awesome. You learn a lot about the foreign culture and how things work in a different country. So if you're lucky enough to be from one of those countries, go apply now. All right, we talked a lot about work and jobs, but you still don't know where to look for them. So in Germany, we have a few platforms that are used more than others, but the biggest one is the one from the government, the Arbeitsagentur or Job Center. You can just register there and look for all the jobs that are available. And there's a lot of supervisors who can help you find a job, give you advice on whatever you might need. The biggest private platforms that are used in Germany are LinkedIn and StepStone. So Definitely check them out if you don't already have. And for all couch potatoes out there, there's also the possibility to register with recruitment firms. Many big companies hire headhunters to look for people. So if you're on their list, it can't hurt. There's of course countless more platforms you can use, but uh, those are the biggest ones. So good luck finding a job. Let's move on to trade unions. The thing every employer hates. Trade unions are a pretty big thing in Germany. Around 20% of all employees here are members in one. If you don't know what a trade union is, 
It's an association of workers who collectively stand up to their employers to fight for their worker rights, better working conditions, higher pay and so on. Every time there's a strike in Germany and you have to walk again to work because the buses or trains aren't coming, you can be sure the strike was organized by a trade union. Trade unions are especially helpful for foreigners who most of the time have little understanding of their rights here in Germany. Joining a trade union has many benefits from general support and advice, to negotiating better pay, to enforcing your worker rights. There are different trade unions for different industries, of course. But for example, if your contract that you signed with your employer says that you earn 2000 euro a month in salary and have 20 days of holidays each year, but the trade unions already negotiated for that industry some labor contracts saying that for this kind of job you get 3000 euro in pay and 30 days of holidays each year, you can make use of these labor contracts. And your original working contract will automatically change into the trade union contract with the better conditions. But of course you can only make use of this if you are a member of the trade union. If you're not member, you cannot have this better contract. But how much will it cost to be member, you ask? Well, standing up to your worker rights like that will cost you around 1% of your gross salary. How does that sound? Is that worth it? Only you can answer this question. Next, unemployment. One of every Berliner's favorite topic. Hartz IV und der Tag gehört dir. Jungen. Despite of all that, Germany has one of the lowest unemployment rates in all of Europe, standing at 3.1%. And even if you're unemployed here, you don't have to worry about sleeping under a bridge or staying hungry. Since Germany is a social state, you will have a pretty decent life even without a job. Everybody who's working also has to pay for unemployment insurance. And if you lose your job, this unemployment insurance kicks in and you will still get money each month. If you become unemployed, you will have to go to the Agentur für Arbeit or job center where they will take all your details and assign you a supervisor who will help you to find a new job. There are two types of unemployment benefits, ALG1 and 2. ALG1 is the better one, but you will only get it if you have worked for a certain amount of time in the last three years. In general, you can say that if you have worked for more than 12 months in the last three years, you are entitled to six months of ALG1 benefits. And if you have worked for more than 24 months, you will get it for a full year. But how much will you get? Well, depending on if you have children, you will get between 60 and 67% of your net salary. So if your net salary was two and a half thousand euro a month before, you will get at least one and a half thousand euro in unemployment benefits. And here it really doesn't matter if you're German, European or from somewhere else. As long as you worked in Germany and you paid into this insurance, you will get those unemployment benefits. What's also worth mentioning is that your health insurance is also fully covered during that time. So no worries about that. And then there's ALG2, also called Hartz IV. This one isn't limited by time. You can potentially get it for the rest of your life. I've already made a whole video about Hartz IV. So if you're interested in knowing more about this, here's the video link check it out. The only thing that I didn't mention in that video is that not every foreigner can easily get it. So it doesn't matter if you're European or from somewhere else, you have to have lived in Germany for at least five years to be entitled to it. It's a great system altogether, but of course there are also people who are taking advantage of this system. In Berlin alone it is estimated that criminal organizations are skimming hundreds of millions of euros of this system each year. All right, let's talk a little bit about pension. Pension insurance is obligatory in Germany. When you work, you have to pay into the pension fund, right? And in Germany, that's 20% of your gross salary. That's a lot of money. That's money you cannot use. It's going into the pension fund. You won't see that money until you are going into pension, which is at the moment the age of 67, but they're already discussing to raise this number to the age of 70. Who needs to have free time when they're old, right? Just work until you're dead. And as I told you, the workforce in Germany is shrinking. There's not enough young people to pay for the pensions of the old people. So the government is actually losing billions of euros each year just to keep the system alive. And even if you're already into pension and you worked your whole life, paid your whole life into this fund, it's probably not enough to have a good life. For the average German who earned like two or three thousand euro a month, when you're in pension, you probably get less than one and a half thousand euro a month out of it. 
So that's not really a comfortable life. You can just cover all the basics. And guess what? You even have to pay taxes on your pension. So if you're working in Germany, don't rely on the pension fund. You have to do your own investments, buy your own house or flat or something for your old age. Anyway, talking about pension at the moment doesn't make much sense in my opinion because it's gonna collapse anyway and we all have to work until we're dead. That's what the government wants. Because the longer we work, the more taxes we need to pay, right? But someone asked a very interesting question. That is, what if you want to emigrate and spend the rest of your old days in another country? Will you still get your pension living abroad? Well, it depends a little. If you would choose a country that is in the European Union, that's no problem at all. You will get your normal pension and health insurance as you would in Germany. But if you want to live in a country outside of the European Union, it gets a little bit more tricky. If you are moving to a country Germany has a social security agreement with, you will also usually get your full pension with health insurance. Though if you choose a country which is not on that list, you will still get your German pension, but the taxation of it will most likely change. Because pension income is seen as taxable income, and depending on a tax agreement Germany has with this country, you might be taxed double. First by Germany and secondly by the country of your choice. Another issue is that you might lose your claim to health insurance, which is probably not the best considering the old age. But that doesn't hinder German pensioners to move abroad. It's actually a very popular thing to do. At the moment there are almost 2 million German pensioners living abroad. People aren't only escaping to get better weather, but also to have a better quality of life. Because even if your German pension might not be enough to live comfortably in Germany, it may enable you to live very comfortable in another country. Let's answer one more question before we wrap it up. The most common question of you was, do you need to speak German or is English enough to find a job in Germany? I would say it really depends on where you want to work in Germany and what kind of job you want to do. If you want to work in Berlin, you don't necessarily need to speak German. If you want to work in the countryside, you will have to learn German for sure. But I would say the industry where it is easiest to get a job without German is the IT sector. And it's a good thing that there's 100,000 positions open, right? But even there you can be sure if you speak German, your chances are higher because then there's more possibilities on what you can do here. So to sum it all up, Germans get over a month of holiday each year, don't want to work in physical labor jobs anymore, don't have to come to work if they feel a little bit sick, get up to two years of parental leave, have to take breaks every few hours, and now they don't even want to come into office anymore. If that doesn't sound lazy, I don't know what does. But anyway, how does that all sound to you? Would you want to work in Germany? Is this all worse or better than in your country? Until next time! See you soon.